The Guided Goals podcast gives you the tools, direction, and resources you need to pursue your passion project. I'm Deborah Eckerling, Project Catalyst, and this is the Guided Goals podcast. Our guest today is Simone Bartezaghi, and we're going to talk about Simone's story and visual storytelling, and probably we'll throw in some filmmaking as well. Simone is the author of The Director's Six Senses and teaches filmmaking, directing, and screenwriting. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Debra. Nice to meet, see you. <laughs> nice to meet and see you too. And and you have the kind of story that that I like to think our listeners can relate to because you were on a completely different path and then you took a chance and now you have a completely different life. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, until 10 years ago, uh, my life was totally different. Uh, I... I have an MBA and uh, I was a consultant in organization when I was living in Italy. Uh, I was uh, an expert in how to make companies more profitable and that was kind of my business. Uh, but I've always been in love with storytelling. Always Since I was a kid, uh, writing and watching movies has always been part of my life. But in some way when I, I came to the age of 18, 19 and to really decide what to do with my life, I didn't believe in my talent or in my dreams and and I pursued something that was much more practical and and in some way looks more serious uh, but you know growing up slowly I started to miss the creativity I started to miss the opportunity to write and um, when I was uh, uh, 28 29 I was trying to find every opportunity to do something that could allow my creativity to express itself uh, in the years when the new Star Wars at that time episode one came out I was doing role-playing games, although I was 28, 29, I was uh, already still doing those kind of things, and um, I, I always had passion for, for that part. And uh, uh, fortunately, I was, and I'm still married with a great woman that uh, she understood kind of my predicament, and uh, one day she found a little school in Italy that was just opening about filmmaking, and for once a week, you would go there to study for two hours uh, how to make a short, pretty much. Um, and it was, you know, my my one night or in which I could do something totally different. Uh, and I still remember the first time I said action, and I was completely in love with that. Uh, the, the whole experience was phenomenal. Uh, but again, at that time, I didn't believe or think that it could change anything. Uh, until a, uh, a few years later, I had the opportunity to submit a couple of shorts that I did uh, by myself to a festival, and that festival that year was very uh, special. It was the Milan International Film Festival. Uh, it was 2004, and uh, for the first time, one of the prizes was actually a full tuition for one year at, at, in a school here in LA, at the Los Angeles Film School. And uh, I submitted my material very reluctantly, thinking that you know I will never win. And a few months later, I got a communication that actually uh, I won the full prize, and uh, actually I won bo both first and second prize really? of that competition. And uh, they shipped me here for to study filmmaking for one year. And we decided with my wife, this is one of those op opportunities, but also experiences that you want to live as a family. So we both came here uh, and suspended our life for one year. Literally, we said, you know, we frozen everything: the house, the work, uh, my clients, everything. We said to them, you know, we are going to be back in 12 months, don't, don't leave us. <laughs> uh, and in some way, 12 months at the end of the school, I got the first uh, offer for the first job. And I did the first job, and then we were supposed to go come back to Italy. And for two years and a half, pretty much, every three or four months, we were supposed to go back, and <laughs> we never did. And now, literally, 10 years later, we, we are still here. And now I'm actually a director. I, I won prizes as, both as a feature director as, and also as a screenwriter. And also I teach um, uh, directing and screenwriting at the Santa Monica College. So in some way, lots of things have become full, full circle for me. I still use some of the uh, tools that I learn as a consultant, uh, but definitely my life is, is totally different. I used to say that before... Um, my work I, was to be a consultant and to help other companies. Right now, I don't work. I'm a director. I'm a screenwriter. And I, I work 24-7, but it doesn't seem to be a real work. It's just a, uh, living a dream, really. I guess the lesson is if someone who is listening or watching and is thinking, oh, yeah, 
I really miss doing that thing that I left behind for the sensible life. It's worth it to to explore it and see what happens. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially because I think that there are things that we we love instantly when we are teenager and we are young, and in some way, um, sometimes the culture around us or families or or just our own fear prevent us to embrace them completely. Uh, and then we discovered 20 years later that actually that was really the thing that made us happy, that, that it was our real uh, destiny. And, and just for different reasons, we never explored it. Uh, life is full of surprises every day and chances every day. Uh, it, it really, I, I realize how much many things that are happening today that we don't know or, or we, have, we fear that might have not have any consequences. Actually, later on, they change everything. Um, I have a little um, story that I, I always tell my students when I'm in class. That uh, um, at the beginning of the of the school, when I was uh, at the Los Angeles Film School, um, there was a part of the program where the new students were recruited by the elder older students to do their shorts uh, as a crew. Pretty much, we were kind of slaves, uh, working night and days for for people that were just you know a few months more experienced than us. Uh, but I had the opportunity actually to work on a great set. And one day, um, one of my classmates wanted to have my position. On that set, I was second assistant camera. So I was learning everything about lenses and uh, magazines and how to load a camera and film. And someone else wanted to have my, my place. And so it was 6 in the morning, and they told me, listen, there is nothing for you to do here today. Go home and, you know, 6 in the morning, go to sleep. There's going to be plenty of work to do tomorrow. And I remember that I told them, are you crazy? I came all the way here from Italy uh, just to learn these things and to live in this situation. I won't go home. I, I will learn just watching you guys work. And so I picked up a little mini TV camera that a friend of mine gave me. And I started to shoot behind the scenes material uh, just for me and to show my family what, what we were doing and my wife. But that, that shooting, it was so engaging because I was deciding, you know, what to shoot, what are, what are the part of the filmmaking experience that I liked. And later on, I did a little documentary about it that is called uh, Impressions at 24 frames per second. It's still today on, on YouTube or somewhere. And uh, that documentary actually started to attract the attention of my teachers, one of which hired me at the end to be a production manager on one of their productions. Another one introduced me to a production company that needed someone to do behind the scenes. And I had this kind of little career doing behind the scenes. And uh, a few movies later, I met the producer, actually, that gave me the opportunity to, to direct my first feature. And so in some way, I always tell them, you know, trust your heart and your passion and, and be, uh, be fair with it. Treat it well, because if you are not the first one to respect your, your passion, nobody will. So because that day I, I was actually uh, following my passion and my instinct and I did something that out of the moment wouldn't have, didn't have any repercussion for my future. I didn't think that shooting that little video would have brought any result. But now, uh, you know, 10 years later, I know that actually that commitment to my dreams brought me to the right of my first feature. And it's kind of a straight line of dots that connects these two events. And I, I like the purity of that thing, the fact that actually, the, you know, trusting my, my instinct led me a few years later to, to be a first-time uh, feature director. So uh, that's, I love it. That, that's really amazing. And it, it was just because you, you were going to seize every single opportunity within Absolutely. this path you were pursuing. Absolutely. And so in what ways has your background in business helped your filmmaking? Well, the, um, you know, the way to enter into the movie business, there are many paths. You might, might want to become a director or a screenwriter, but there are many jobs that, that you can do that actually are still storytelling. Uh, and that's, you know, fundamentally it's what we think we are, and we are, we are storytellers. So what happened was that because of my experience in, in uh, organization, uh, the, the first few jobs that I got were as a production manager, as a production coordinator. So everything connected to how to organize a team of people to, and make them ready to deliver a product pretty much. 
that was something that was kind of second nature to me because I've done it for so many years in Italy. It was just a different kind of product, but the the issues of organization, motivating uh, you know a team of work of people to work together, uh, find a way to make the communication uh, works better and faster and more efficient. It was always part of my of my life before, so it was kind of easy to translate that in the movie business, uh, and also uh, allow me to kind of understand very quickly the predicament and the issues that are into uh, producing a movie because it's kind of very easy for me to see where are the obstacles that eventually uh, the production process uh, might have in the future. So still today, uh, I, I am very active, but I, even when I direct, in, in making decisions that are related to the production, pretty much. So that definitely affected it. What skills from filmmaking, and, and I love how your book is called The Director's Six Senses, because it's not, it's not just linear. All stories are... <laughs> Right, all of what? are the whole experience. So, what what things can people take from filmmaking that they can incorporate into the life of their business as they build it to help it grow? Well, I, I, you know, the, the origin of, of of that title and that book is because uh, on one side I always felt that most of the books about directing are literally about. Uh, uh, the technicality of directing, so shot list and breakdown script, but none of them really tells you how to train your uh, brain in in perceiving the world in a way that can be helpful for you when you direct. After all, when when we direct, we are telling stories about human beings, and I, I feel that the best directors are the ones that actually are able to see the world and perceive the world in a certain way, and then recreate it in on the screen for us to to watch. Uh, and the same thing it applies for for everything, and that's why I think that that book is not only really for directors, but it's just for everybody that wants to experience life, uh, expanding your your senses and your ability to perceive things that are happening around you. You know, when we are talking about vision of uh, uh, you yeah, know sight, uh, we always talk about what you can see, but often we forget about the fact that all the other senses complete. Uh, what we see actually enrich that experience of our day by day life. Well, sometimes things happen in front of us that we don't really pay too much of attention. And I think that become a more observer and, and more sensitive and sensible in terms of every single uh, sense, uh, pretty much, and not only the sight, is, is going to help everybody to become a better person because you're going to realize more things about others, more things about the worlds that is surrounding you, and definitely going to discover the fact that inside, if we take off our armor, that society, and again, our fears, and sometimes the event of our life put on, force us to put on, underneath that armor, we are all the same. We all desire love, we all uh, fear death, and there are elements that makes us all humans. Uh, unfortunately, there are many layers of armors that we put on throughout our life that brings uh, uh, us to clash with others. But at the end, we are uh, we have all the part. We are all have the same nature, I think. And and that nature, when you go back to the senses, kind of becomes very obvious and very easy to to recognize. Um, so, just to to say what you said in a long way, in a very short way. If you're more aware of your senses and the things around you, it will help you in your business, in the creative projects that you're building, in your perspective on life in general. In oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, life in general and mostly in relationship, I think. Mm -hmm. in, in, because uh, our senses are going to explore and, uh, and understand others and what they go through. And I think that that will make you more open to other ideas and how to collaborate with others. I think that the collaborator offered is the true nature of filmmaking. And I think that that's the same thing that helps us many people to be very successful in, uh, in their businesses because are able to recognize that being a know-it-all is actually one way to reduce your ability to, uh, to be successful. When you start to enrich your, your life with the other people's experiences and other uh, people's expertise, you will see that you can achieve much, much more. And I think that through your senses, you can, you can understand that and, and uh, embrace uh, the collaboration with others in a different way. 
Do you have an example of a type of exercise you recommend for people to get more in touch with their surroundings? Well, um, there are several exercises that, that I put on the book that some of them, they might look silly and some others, they're a little bit more serious. Uh, but definitely there are two that I think are, are the one that you can apply easily to everybody. Um, one exercise is connected to uh, the visual, so uh, when you see something. And uh, it's very simple in reality. The idea is to um, start to look at the pictures uh, that you can find in magazines, in newspapers. And when you see a picture that affects you, that in some way you look at it and you're like, okay, I can see a story here, there is an emotion here that is very strong, try to figure out why you feel that emotion. What is that is so strong in that picture that tells you so much? Sometimes they are very intense and they are very obvious, you know, war pictures or events that are happening that are very famous so that you, you are affected just by the fact that you know what that picture is. But sometimes you open a page and you find a picture and then you don't know the story behind it, you don't know anything, but just because of the colors and the composition and eventually the, the people that are portrayed, you are affected and you are, you are curious to know more about it. Well, I think that that is one way that um, uh, start to become aware of why you were uh, sensitive to those, to those images will make you also observe the world in a different way. So when you sit at the Starbucks, do kind of the same. Stare in front of you, uh, try to don't move. Look at the things that are happening in front of you and realize what are if there are some elements that attract your attention uh, in the behavior of people or, or uh, images that are there. And you will start to realize that there are common patterns, common elements that actually are, um, are things that you like the most, uh, things that make you feel better. So you will realize that uh, the colors, the, the composition, the, the pattern, the movement, and later on you can apply these, of course, to sound, are those things that... Uh, can give you more, uh, they can please you or can distract you. And so my idea is that through this exploration, bring it to your homework. So when you're in your, in your office, try to, try to recreate and surround yourself with those things that bring you excitement, if you need to be excited or they calm you down. And this exercise, this awareness of the surrounding uh, and how the surrounding affects you will help you to create an environment for yourself that are going to become more productive that are going to help you to find uh, the condition where you can express yourself in the best way. I love that. That's wonderful. And I'm, I'm, you're talking and I'm like, there's so many different applications. Like if you are, if you're writing a book and you're not sure what even the book cover looks mm -hmm. like, look yes. at other books and see the way you react to which ones you see and use that to help you form what your visual look like. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what I think, for instance, to my students, I always tell them, try, start to collect this picture, literally mm -hmm. cut them and put them in a folder, uh -huh. and you slowly, you start to realize that um, if you forget for a second the, the true stories behind, behind these pictures, you will realize that there are colors that come back more often, kind of lenses that come back more, more often, composition, and camera position, angles, and you realize what is that really that you like? What are the, the, these elements that please you the most? And so when you're going to make your movies, in, in the case of my students, well, don't try to fight against your instinct. Try actually to use, especially in the first project that you have, that you're doing, try to use these styles and these characteristics that you found through the pictures and use them, because that means that this is your style, that is what you like. So don't try to reinvent the wheel. Try to do first what you like and make you feel home. And I think that that will make you more productive and, again, uh, help you to, to be a better, in our case, a better filmmaker. This is terrific. And I'm so excited because in a minute I'm going to give our, our audience some goals. But before we get there, um, what do you, you said that you love working, you're working all the time. Is there anything that you do to, it maintain work-life balance that you think would be helpful for others? Um, <laughs> there, is, there is one little problem with, with the work balance right now with me. It's that, unfortunately, I don't consider what I do at work anymore. And literally, it's a 
uh, endeavor pretty much. And and I know that I need to take breaks. I need to uh, distract my mind and, and my body and do other things. Uh, but the reality is really I love so much what I'm doing that it's not a work. It's... Uh, it, yeah, I have so much passion for it that uh, I, I, the idea to work Saturday and Sundays, it's a normal thing. Uh, my wife sometimes, uh, she gets mad at me because while we are driving and then we're talking about other things and then all of a sudden I tell her, oh, just Sam, pick up the piece of paper and write this. And I tell her <laughs> an idea that I just said and she's like, what is this? And I'm like, don't, don't ask. It's just something that crossed my mind, write it down and then I will take care of it when we are at home. And she knows that probably the next night I will spend it writing. Uh, so it, it's kind of difficult, I think, for someone that is really passionate about uh, what he's doing to separate uh, work with other things. Because if you're not considering really that a work anymore, uh, it's just your life. It's part of your life. And you never know, especially in, in my situation, but I think in, in many people that are they work in a creative environment, you never know when that idea will strike or that moment. Uh, usually during showers, incredibly, it's when you have mostly great ideas and, and find a solution for your script. Or, uh, often when you don't think about it. But then that means that literally 24-7, uh, it's when actually you can find your, your, your most fertile ground anytime, any moment. Okay, so rather than than giving a personal and a professional goal, I'm just gonna give two goals for for our audience. And I think the first one is, and this is something I recommend a lot too, is to keep a notebook of all the ideas that come to you because you never know when you're going to be able to use one of those ideas. And it could be for any type of business or creative project. And I think the second goal is to, to start a, um, a scrapbook or a folder of, of pictures that mean something to you to, to do that exercise. I think that everybody would, would find it useful sometimes to go back to that folder and see how that folder affects you again. It's, uh, I think it's fascinating. It's good. I can't wait to try it. I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm glad. Oh, well, thank you so much, Simone, for joining us today. Uh, thank this you. Is Deborah Eckerling with the Guided Goals podcast, and you can go to guidedgoals.com to get links and more information about this episode. If you have something that's stuck in your head that you want to pursue, what's it going to hurt you to explore it and see what comes of it, right? Absolutely. Everybody should try, definitely. Okay. Well, thank you again. And listeners, you've got your marching orders, so just go on out there and go for it.